Now then, Charlie, listen up, we've got some news for you. Recently, I spent the day with a mountain rescue dogs team based at Kinloch Rannoch at Mountain Outdoor Centre in Highland, Perthshire. And whilst I was there, I caught up with an old friend. For people in trouble on Britain's mountains, the Search and Rescue Dog Association is a lifeline. Last year, they helped rescue almost 400 people. As well as it being a training weekend for the dogs and the handlers, it's also a bit of a reunion for me. Meg, my dog, who was on Blue Pete with me for seven years, had a litter of pups two years ago. And we donated one to Sada. It's a little bit big, uh, but I think she might grow into it. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> and here she comes over the hill, perfectly on cue. James, how are you doing? All right? Oh, fine, yes. So how are you getting on with her? Oh, she's coming. Great. Fine. Come on, darling, come and say hello, look. You've still got your blue Peter badge on, I'm pleased to see. Brilliant. How is she getting on with the training? No, so? she's coming on really well. So we're working on much bigger searches now and we're starting to get ready for our assessment. And in October, hopefully we'll be going for assessment oh. and go for the call out list. Lovely. Well, do you remember me, Corrie? It's lovely to see you. I tell you, you are absolutely beautiful. All right, then, let's have a cuddle. <laughs> Corrie's almost finished her training. It takes about three years for a dog to get to call-up status. Each dog is worth 20 people in a search. Dogs can cover huge areas because they search by smell, not sight. One of the people training with their dog here today is Paul Martin, and he'll be showing me how it's done. Well, Paul, here we are in the middle of Kinloch, Rannoch. It's absolutely beautiful. Have you got the whole of the uh, the Mountain Rescue dog team from Southern Scotland here? Yeah, we've got about 15 dogs with us here this weekend. All with different levels, from right from puppy dog up to a full search dog this weekend. Paul and everyone else in the Search and Rescue Dog Association are volunteers. We're on call 365 days a year, so we could be just sitting down to a nice big steak and the phone goes and they want us out with our dogs. Yeah, and, and do you find it's usually a night time that that happens? Because I guess people don't realise somebody's gone missing until about night time when they think, hang on a minute. All just depends, but it's the ones in the middle of the night, they're the hard ones trying to crawl yourself out of bed. Training needs to be as realistic as possible, and that means real, live bodies to look for. In exercises, the dogs find the people acting as bodies 90% of the time. I volunteered to help today, so I'm hoping I'm not in the unlucky 10% who don't get found. Well, it could be a very long, cold night. Well, I'm now playing the part of a dog's body, and hopefully Paul's dog, Ken, is going to come and find me. The idea is he's going to pick up on the scent, run back to Paul, let him know he's found something about barking, and then bring Paul over. But I better shut up. I don't want him to hear me. Find him. That's him into the set now, and you can see him just taking off over the hill there. So hopefully he'll come back to me shortly and indicate. Oh, here he comes. <laughs> he'll keep coming back and forth to me to tell me where the where my is until I match you up with me. And he's got his toy, I can yeah. talk now. What about that? I tell you what, that was unbelievable. It was so intense. As soon as he, you know, he pops up, he's like, right, got him, gotta go. That was unbelievable, Ken. Good lad. There now. And if, there you go, look, you got the toy, so it's, it's all a, toy, it's all a game. Brilliant. Paul and Ken are an experienced team, and I'm not the first person to be pleased to see them. In a real emergency, a dog's skills can mean the difference between life and death. Well, Ken, you did a super job rescuing me, but Paul, just tell us about this uh, rescue that you were both involved with just outside of Stirling. Yeah, it was the beginning of the year, and we got a phone call from the police on the, the Sunday night mm -hmm. uh, for a 34-year-old man with Down syndrome had gone missing walking his dog. Yeah. So I was asked if I could attend first thing on the Monday morning. So. Of course, I went on the Monday morning to help the uh, local team and the local police force uh, look for him. And I was given this uh, section of forest that was quite a distance away from his home. And, and I was sweeping back through, and, and the dog disappeared into the trees. And the next minute, Cairn comes back, and there's another dog following him. Uh, so the dog indicates, so I follow it up. And then just as I come around the corner there, I see Alex sitting on the tree. It's not until you actually see Alex, it's like, oh, great, I've actually done it. This is what we train for, to go out and save people's lives. And at the end of the day, I, I saved Alex's life by finding him as quick that morning. So it was, it was a great feeling finding him. 
I'll tell you what, I had a fabulous day up there. Now, as you just heard from Ken's owner, Paul, Ken was recently involved in a rescue mission to find Alex Dench, who found himself stranded in a forest all alone at night after taking a wrong turn whilst out on a walk. Well, I'm mean, thankful to say that Alex has recovered and come with me because he's here to tell us all about his ordeal. Alex, it's great to see you. Welcome to Animal yeah. Rescue Live. Now then, this was absolutely extraordinary, wasn't it? Just just tell us, yeah. Alex, what, what, what went on? Just, just, yeah, just tell me. I was out with the dog. Yeah. Went up the, the woods. Yeah. And it went up, put it around, and the must have turned on. And mm. after that, I was my dog not eating after that. Yeah. That would be till the next day, 17 hours. Yeah. How long? 17, Seven, 17 hours? Yes. And, and so did you think then, Alex, you know, you were obviously alone, Murphy wasn't there. What did you do? No, Murphy... Oh, Murphy, Murphy was still with you Murphy, at the time? Murphy was with me all night. Yeah. He never went at me for me. Was he keeping you warm? Yeah. Was he? Yeah. And what was it like there, the pair of you, and what, what was going through your mind at it the time? Was, it was a nightmare. I was getting I'll come in a minute. Yeah. I ended up the next morning, I moved away. Yeah. I seen the log and I sat there till I found me at 11 o'clock. Well, Betty, what were you going through at this time? Because, I mean, yeah. you know, your son's out there. Mm -hmm. You knew he was like, I mean, were you aware of this whole big rescue mission that yes, was taken place? Yes, yes. We knew he went out at quarter to six. Yeah. And by about quarter to seven, my husband and son-in-law went to look for him. Yeah. And I think I reported him missing just after eight. Right. The police don't wait now, so they immediately sent a rescue thing on yeah. scale, you know. Yeah, yeah. We live in a village, so all the village the whole people, village. oh, they turned out, it was It was amazing. in the local news and everything, wasn't it? I know, it? Yeah. and on the radio, and uh, then they had Sarda, Yes. which is Search and so Rescue, rescue Dog yeah. Association, and also the Oakle Mountain Rescue Team, yeah, yeah. and the Strathclyde helicopter in the morning wow. going round as well. Yeah. And it was about 11 o'clock the next day before we got told they'd been mm -hmm. found. So, Alex, what, what, what do you remember when the dog ran up to you, found you? Because I went through it in that little film that we were just seeing there. What did you, what did you think? Um, um, that's very good. It's very good. Me, and that dog was very... Good. So was my dog as well, Benny. Yeah. Very. That is my hero. Well, listen, Alex. Yeah. Murphy isn't here. I know. But I know that you feel a lot about the dog that found yeah. you. And we've got a little surprise for you. Yeah. So why don't you come with me? Up we go, Betty. Come on out. Because in our courtyard, here at Battersea, is Ken, oh. the dog oh. that oh. saved you. And Paul is here as I've well. I've never seen the You've dog. You've never seen him? Never come seen on over, Paul Betty, either. come on over. Alex, I know you want to have a bit of a moment there, so <laughs> hey, you go and sit hey, there, you How go. You doing? And in you go, Betty. You can hey, sit yourself next down yeah. to Alex there. Pleased to meet you. I've never met you. What about this then? Hello, Paul, there. great to see you. Thanks for making the journey all the way down from Scotland. But Alex, what would you like to say to Paul and Ken? Whatever you want. Yeah, thank you for to me and that, it was, so, it was nice. Oh, well, and Betty, I mean, obviously, you must be hugely grateful for the oh, team. Yes. Yeah. I never met yeah. Paul because we had to go to the hospital just yeah. for a check-up for Alex. Right. So uh -huh. I, mean, I never met him. And Paul has been going since. You've been involved in any of the rescue missions? Yeah, or? I've been quite busy. Uh, I've done another couple. I've been out in Livingston, just outside Edinburgh. And on Friday night, I was on the LR and looking for a couple of missing hill walkers and some bad weather. So I've yeah. been kept going. Brilliant stuff. Well, Ken, you are an absolute star, aren't you, my darling? Oh, my dog. Yeah, yeah. She's gorgeous, isn't she? Look at her beautiful eyes. There you go. And you did so well in finding Alex. There you go. There you go. Well, I know Alex and Paul and Ken, yeah. it's all your first time, and Betty, of course, yes, it's all your yeah. first time in London. So why don't you go for a lovely walk? Go and have a look at the Millennium Mike. It'd be fantastic. You yeah. Enjoy the sights of London together. Paul, thanks so much for coming in. Alex, it's great to see you. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Betty, for coming along as well. Now then, earlier.